Marketing Insights. I'm Yasha Ferrari. Um, <laughs> so I'm in the Crown Crypto Cave, which is a uh, trading forum for traders of Bitcoin and other assets in the YouTube channel of Crown Crypto Cave. Um, Crown asked recently uh, in a video, if you're not trading crypto, or you're not talking about trading crypto, then what do you talk about in your YouTube videos about crypto? You know, he was asking in general to crypto YouTubers who aren't traders necessarily and looking at things like price action. Well, I do trade crypto, but I'm not um, talking about trading and price action on my videos. It's not a, you know, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not your financial advisor. It's not financial content and all that stuff. Do your own research stuff. But I don't talk about it, so it's irrelevant. Um, but what I talk about are um, matters related to Bitcoin and marketing and the impact of one on the other. So that said, I want to go over um, a, a list which is, I think, of growing importance. And it's the list of countries in which Bitcoin is illegal and countries in which it is legal. And then look at specifically like the top about 12 or 13 countries uh, in which there are noteworthy things about Bitcoin. So here's the uh, quick list of countries in which crypto has been declared illegal. Algeria, Bolivia, Ecuador, Bangladesh, Nepal, and Macedonia. Now you might wonder why is crypto illegal in Macedonia or places like that? Bolivia, Algeria, Bangladesh, Nepal. Why? Why is it illegal? Well, a lot of legislative bodies just have not caught up with the technology or see it as a threat to their sovereignty and their currency. Uh, and some countries like those I just mentioned are greatly concerned about the potential that crypto could have on their status quo. And since they're flat out against changing those things at the moment, um, things like crypto are just considered illegal there because they view it as um, a form of money laundering or whatever the political excuse is. Um, you know, it's complete nonsense, obviously, but those are in fact six countries in which cryptocurrency is currently illegal um, as of um, June 12, 2020, last I checked. Um, here is a longer list, and it is a country list of uh, countries in which the legalization of cryptocurrency doesn't necessarily mean that the government supports or promotes um, virtual currencies, uh, but nonetheless, cryptocurrency is legal in the following countries. And the list is Morocco, Nigeria, Namibia, South Africa, Canada, Mexico, United States, Costa Rica, Nicaragua, Trinidad and Tobago, Jamaica, Brazil, Argentina, Colombia, Chile, Kyrgyzstan, Cyprus, Israel, the United Arab Emirates, Jordan, Saudi Arabia, Iran, Lebanon, Turkey, India, Pakistan, China, Japan, Hong Kong, Taiwan, South Korea, Indonesia, Philippines, Cambodia, Malaysia, Thailand, Singapore, Vietnam, Croatia, Germany, Poland, Austria, the Czech Republic, Romania, Slovenia, Slovakia, uh, the United Kingdom, New Zealand, Switzerland, Australia, the Netherlands, Belgium, Greece, Ireland, France, Italy, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Bulgaria, Spain, Malta, Portugal, Iceland, Norway, Sweden, Denmark, 
and Ukraine. There may be a few countries left out of that list where it has been legalized since, but basically that is a current list as of 2020 of countries in which cryptocurrency is legal, right? Despite whatever issues or technicalities may restrict it, crypto is legal there. Now, of those countries, I just want to quickly go over a few, well, about 13 or so uh, countries that are noteworthy. The first one is, or number 13 on the list, shall we say. Number 13, right? Um, Russia. Okay, Russia has basically made uh, Bitcoin not illegal. It has been declared such in November 2016. Um, and even though it's not clear if any other crypto other than Bitcoin is legal or illegal, people are in fact allowed to buy or sell or trade in crypto. Um, so you can use exchanges in Russia. Right? Uh, they don't really regulate or support it, uh, but they're not prohibiting it. Number 12, India. Right? The government in India has been basically kind of neutral about whether or not crypto is legal in India, but recently rulings have been made or ruling was made that said that crypto is in fact legal, so the banks could not make it uh, prohibited. And uh, that caused quite an interest in crypto when that happened. Um, and we can see that it's having an impact. Um, so long term, we will see, in fact, the government probably uh, launching or promoting crypto eventually, but it may take a while. It may take a lot more working out to do. is Singapore, which is um, a, you know, a small city state, highly uh, financially successful. Uh, and you would think, well, maybe these people don't even need crypto, but yet they see the future of financial services and financial uh, income, which is a huge chunk of their income and revenue as a, as a city state. So they see that crypto will play an important part of that and therefore um, Crypto is unregulated for now uh, and legal in Singapore, even though you can freely use it. Uh, it is, in fact, taxable in some cases in Singapore, but generally speaking, um, they don't control the prices and they don't control the operations of crypto. So you can operate freely if you have crypto uh, in Singapore. Next on my list at number 10 uh, is Thailand. Uh, the Bank of Thailand has actually legalized Bitcoin in 2017. And the uh, official exchange and trading of digital currencies is permitted uh, as far as, um, you know, well, I mean, they allow trading um, as long as there's proper taking, as proper, proper uh, care or you know, self-regulation in place. Um, there are licensed Bitcoin exchanges in Thailand and they are allowed to exchange crypto for the Thai bot. So uh, that's awesome. Um, however, uh, the Central Bank of Thailand does not allow uh, people uh, who use its services, uh, any associated financial institutions, to take part in any kind of crypto business activity. Now for number nine on my list, I have Holland. Holland. Uh, right in the heart of Europe, is one of the countries in which uh, they've shown a very positive attitude towards Bitcoin and other crypto currencies. Uh, they, uh, there's a special region in Holland called Bitcoin City, uh, where all Bitcoin transactions, including retail purchases, are completely legal. Uh, on the other hand, the government in Holland has not yet regulated or officially legalized the use. I mean, it's legal, but they haven't sanctified it with legalities. Uh, but it is legal to use, and people in Holland definitely use crypto. Um, number eight, 
uh, on my list is Vietnam. Uh, trading crypto and trading Bitcoin specifically, uh, but other cryptos as well, is legal in Vietnam. But again, you cannot use it as a payment tool, as I mentioned earlier. So that means that uh, you can create cryptos, you can create ICOs, you can create IEOs, you can create all kinds of projects people do with crypto and blockchain, and you can trade it on exchanges. Um, they're also uh, working, I believe, on, and they may have already done it, I think, last I checked, but they are working on full legalization to be sanctified um, as a way to pay. Uh, so that would be a big step forward, and I think they might have to actually... In any case, if you know, because I forget, uh, leave a comment with whether or not Vietnam has legalized uh, Bitcoin. Otherwise, I'd have to look it up now and pretend like I knew it all along, but I'm telling you I've forgotten. So, yes, that happens. Sometimes I forget. Um, <laughs> next on the list is Canada at number seven. Canada, in 2017 began accepting impact coin, I-M-P-A-K, impact coin, as its first legalized cryptocurrency. And the regulation authority of Quebec also had previously legalized Bitcoin for some limited amounts of business and different types of business, like Bitcoin ATMs or Bitcoin exchanges. But the Bank of Montreal and other Canadian states do not allow their customers to use bank cards for transactions with cryptocurrencies. Uh, so yes, yes, crypto is legal in Canada. Yes, it faces some challenges, uh, but generally speaking, it is a crypto-friendly country. Uh, number six, I have Belarus. Now, Belarus, while, while it remains basically the last dictatorship in Europe, um, effectively, from March of 2019, cryptocurrencies have been legalized in Belarus, and uh, they are also um, allowed to be traded on exchanges and used in ICOs and smart contracts and all the other blockchain purposes that you have, aside from just buying and selling. Um, it was decreed as such by a presidential order in 2019. And um, they did this in an effort to actually enforce the development of a digital economy. And according to all the reports, um, crypto activity in Belarus is actually completely tax-free, which makes it a very crypto-friendly state, right? It's not just legal, it's tax-free. Um, at number five, I have Malta. And Malta has made its name uh, very popular in a long list of crypto countries that are accepting Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies as a mode of digital transactions. Um, they had recently uh, had a relationship with Binance and they called themselves Bitcoin Island and they were all doing this big PR hype where they were promoting regulation of crypto and ICOs and everything else. Uh, but what happened is the government in Malta changed uh, due to some murder and an investigation into it by a local journalist and the politics for, you know, the relatively small island that it is, the politics went through the roof and the government changed. And as a result, uh, the pro-crypto government was out and the new government, people thought would also be pro-crypto, uh, or some thought, uh, but it turns out they weren't, and, or not so much, and they basically have begun uh, regulating crypto much more strictly, and Binance agreed, or decided to leave, uh, basically not have their headquarters be in Malta anymore as a result, although they still do have some customer service people there, as I understand, um, but basically Malta is still a place in which crypto is legal. It's just not quite as friendly as it might have been a year or two ago. On the other hand, you know, times change and governments change. At number four is Germany. 
Uh, Germany is one of the few European countries uh, that not only allow cryptocurrencies, but also is actively involved in developing its own blockchain solutions. Um, Germany has completely legalized Bitcoin, and they allow transactions by any citizen uh, to trade with Bitcoin. Uh, but in Germany, they're also actively, as I said, mentioning, uh, they're actually developing Bitcoin compatible solutions, other blockchain solutions. So they came up with, uh, for the European Union or for Germany, they want to sell BTCE, which are like uh, tiny percentages, you know, one one hundredth of a, or one one thousandth of a percent of a Bitcoin. So you can buy it for like, you know, if a Bitcoin is $10,000, you can buy a BTCE for $10, right? And the price is proportional. Uh, in relation. So whatever Bitcoin moves, the BTCE moves in relation to it. Uh, and they want to do that to allow people to buy and sell Bitcoin effectively through a regulated market where you effectively own the BTCE, but you can actually settle if you want to physical Bitcoin, what they call physical Bitcoin, which is you, know, you actually own the private keys. Um, if that actually goes online as expected, that will be huge because the German government and the German market are obviously you know, the market leader in Europe. Uh, Germany and France have the two biggest economies of Europe. So whatever they do is massively important vis-a-vis -vis Europe and its economy. Um, so that is already a very big thing um, for the growth and adoption of Bitcoin that goes a lot unnoticed, even though the technology adoption for day-to-day -day use may seem still limited, and it is, although I use it a lot. Um, the fact is, uh, mass adoption is actually happening at the institutional level, uh, which means they see the value of it financially, and they're you know, working on applications in tandem with corporations, private sector, and all that to get to that place where everybody has a reason and a way to use them. Number three on the list, the United States. And the United States basically has accepted Bitcoin since 2013 as a uh, decentralized currency that can be used for certain transactions, for, for transactions. It has been listed as a commodity by the CFTC uh, in September 2015. And what that means is uh, it's not a security, right? Uh, it is taxable as property. Basically, Bitcoin is legal in the US. Of course, that said, there is no exact clarification on all of the different legalization aspects of crypto in the US market. And of course, the US market is massively important for the world economy and the use and adoption of crypto because so much development is happening there, so much investing is happening there, so much trading is happening there. Um, you know, what happens in the US matters to crypto in many senses, especially when it comes to uh, the marketing of Bitcoin and crypto and other things. Uh, number two on the list is Japan. Um, Japan has actually long been uh, probably the fastest developer of uh, the crypto technology and other technology markets around the world, um, they have legalized cryptocurrency, right? So they did set up specific uh, Payment Services Act, and the Payment Services Act allows for a framework or is a framework that allows certain cryptocurrencies and other exchanges um, to be used for payment and for trading purposes. Um, and Japan is now widely considered a hub for cryptocurrency trading and exchange in Asia. Right? There's many coins in Asia, many uh, that are legally accepted. There's many exchanges where you can trade crypto, Bitcoin, and other things, Mona coin, many other popular coins in Japan. Japan is by far a leading country in the world of crypto and blockchain development. And so much there is happening is extremely exciting in terms of marketing uh, technology and uh, crypto related marketing um, that really it has to be recognized as one of the leaders in the world today for what is happening with crypto. 
Uh, and number one on my list is actually, well, maybe it's not such a surprise, but it's France, right? Number one is France. Um, basically, in 2014, the French legalized Bitcoin and virtual currencies, like altcoins, right? Uh, they legalized crypto exchanges, they legalized taxation, and they legalized um, providing authority to those who are involved in trading and cryptocurrencies. Now, the French, if anything, love their bureaucracy, and they have bureaucratized <laughs> or bureaucratized crypto to the nth degree, but it is legal. You can buy it in a local tabac shop already since about a year or so. Um, that's like a, you know, a local tobacco shop or whatever, where they sell newspapers, tobacco, that kind of stuff, whatever, you know, things. Uh, but you can buy Bitcoin there, right? And not only that, but in France, um, it is legal tender, right? France is actually the first nation in which, or the first major economic power of the G8, uh, in which Bitcoin is actually legal tender, right? which you can use to settle all debts, right? Um, so it is recognized as legal tender in France, which means adoption may follow. And by having legalized Bitcoin in a country like France, and by having legalized Bitcoin in a country like Germany, who's developing its own blockchain solutions, um, right there in the heart of Europe, and by having it legal in Canada and the United States, what is effectively happening? These countries that are investing tons of money, especially in Europe um, and in Japan, that are investing massive amounts into developing blockchain solutions, they're not doing this so that this stuff will go away, right? They don't want to go through the process of creating a whole framework for Bitcoin to work for their country and their fiat and their citizens just to get rid of it. That wouldn't really make any sense, right? Um, but that said, there's still a lot of marketing roadmap kind of challenges for every single crypto project. And keep in mind that the biggest one of all doesn't uh, have, well, you know, there's no official Bitcoin marketing department, even though you can check out the website, Bitcoin Marketing, D-E-P-T, department, bitcoinmarketingdepartment.com, <laughs> and enjoy that. Um, you're welcome, Bitcoin. Um, but the legalization of Bitcoin in all of these markets means one thing. You can count on it continuing to grow in importance. You can count on Bitcoin to continue growing in value as more governments implement more systems and more people buy into those systems. The price of the coin will naturally go up Right? If the greater, if the audience size is growing, um, or if the user base is growing. Um, so yeah, those are, those are basically my list of countries in which Bitcoin and crypto is legal. But I wanted to make one special mention here, and actually two, okay? One of them is kind of an odd one, and it's Venezuela. In Venezuela, if you know about the petro, uh, the petro dollar, uh, petro bolivar that they tried to invent, uh, they basically tried to make their own cryptocurrency, which was just a fork of Dash or whatever. It was some, it was some not well done thing. They just copied someone else's coin and slapped their own logo and name on it. And the idea was that you would settle. If you were trading in Bitcoin or buying trading in oil, that you would settle with this particular crypto so that the government could effectively have more control over the money. Because, of course, in Venezuela, they have massive problems in their economy due to political reasons and social reasons. And, you, know, you can look that up. It's quite a complex subject. Venezuela is in a difficult situation. Their money has suffered through hyperinflation over the last years and, you know, People literally are using their fiat paper money to make bags and belts and fashion items and they're throwing them out by the truckload or using them as God knows what. You know, it, it, it's really bad, right? Um, and, but they saw an opportunity to allow Bitcoin and Litecoin and I think Dash 
for payments. Um, so they do allow that in Venezuela. However, uh, their petro cryptocurrency, whatever they called it, uh, is dead because nobody uses it. Nobody was ever going to use it. Um, so they're, they're not using that anymore. Um, but they are encouraging more and more use and adoption of things like Bitcoin because for them it's actually a useful solution, right, for those who can get it. Of course, most people don't have Bitcoin in Venezuela, but those that do uh, are showing an increased number increased level of activity and that's visible throughout South America uh, where you know a lot of economies are facing harder times people have been increasing their adherence or adoption of cryptocurrency at least as a store of value right where their money is depleting because of inflation their money is depleting in value far greater than Bitcoin is so they convert their money to Bitcoin just so that even if Bitcoin's price is falling it's falling far less their price of fiat, right? That's how they view it. So um, that's a special mention, right? Venezuela, because it's it's a wacky one. And my last one um, is actually, it should have maybe even been on the list, and, and maybe it's really even number one, I'm not sure, but Portugal, right? In Portugal, uh, Bitcoin is legal. Crypto is legal. You can trade cryptocurrency, and they don't even tax you. A European country, right, right in the on on the continent, okay, um, with full regulation allowing crypto and Bitcoin to be traded, bought, sold, exchanged, whatever you want, used in applications, used in development, used in app, you know IEOs, used in whatever format you want to use them with, crowdfunding, anything you want. On top of that, they made it essentially tax free if you trade it. For example, if you know make revenue from it, which massively, but massively encourages development and adoption of cryptocurrency in an economy like Portugal, where it could be a huge benefit to businesses and people, right, and the government in terms of taxation, revenue, and everything else. So Portugal is really like a special gem of all the mentions. I mean, yeah, it's wonderful that it's legal tender in France. It's actually amazing that it's a bigger economy and everything else. But Portugal is showing the way that they just want to encourage adoption more than anything. You know, if they ever do decide to tax it, maybe in the future, the point is they're giving it a honeymoon period to encourage adoption at the highest possible you know, amount that they can, which is come here, develop your crypto business, whatever it is, and you won't be taxed at all. So you can put all of that, you can reinvest all of your money back into your business to make it grow right there in Portugal um, without having to suffer the consequences of you know dealing with an extremely volatile market that's charging you taxation that may seem like a fixed rate in fiat, but then when you pay it out of your crypto, you know it could get really complicated for a lot of businesses. And the fact that they've taken that into account especially during the early days, the, the gold rush days, the whatever you want to call these days of, of crypto. The fact that Portugal is saying, no, no, we're not going to stifle the growth of crypto in Portugal. We're going to encourage it, right? That way we actually have a chance of succeeding in some portion of it. Um, and you're going to see more of that in places like Portugal. Expected to see it in sporting events. Expected to see it in, you know, I mean, and they love their football in Portugal, right? That's awesome. And they have a strong culture there for that. And um, for sure, there's going to be tokenized elements of sports. There's going to be tokenized elements of sporting teams. There's going to be players that are superstars, you know, selling their own tokenized brands. Um, just in that aspect of culture alone, right? That is a multi billion dollar industry, right? And they could easily just tokenize it, and boom, now you have a multi-billion multi -billion dollar tokenized industry built in that's already endemic to the culture of the country in which they don't even necessarily, you know, they don't tax development. So they're just building adoption. And as this gets bigger and bigger and bigger, once it's actually a significant size, well, then, yeah, of course, the government's going to come in and, you know, say, hey, well, we want a piece of it now, because that's what they do. But at least they're encouraging the development, just like in the United States in the 1990s, there was the issue of internet taxation, and by delaying those internet taxations on commerce, on things like trade, e-shopping, whatever you're doing, buying ads, selling stuff online, um, 
by delaying that, you know, federally, by not imposing federal taxes on internet commerce, um, they encouraged the development, and we saw it happen in the mid to late 90s. We saw that whole internet boom, that dot-com boom, and while you can say, well, it created a bubble that crashed, and that is true, um, what created that bubble and what subsequently crashed was largely speculation. Yet, from the ashes of that dot-com bubble, we have now you know, Web 2.0 and social media and cryptocurrency and everything else that came along as a result of all the tech being built and all the infrastructure being put in place by other companies that tried to build the way and simply failed and had to sell out to competitors or to buyers or to whoever. And those people, you picked up that infrastructure or whatever was useful of it and built on top of it and made it better and made it more useful and made it cheaper and on and on and on. And the same thing is happening with Bitcoin and cryptocurrency specifically in the countries in which it's legal and they're encouraging the development. So, um, yeah, that's going to do it. Um, I'd love to know what you think of my list. If I have left any particular countries out that you think should be special mentioned, by all means, leave a comment. If you're from a country that I didn't mention, but you know crypto status is either different than I mentioned or is, well, if I didn't mention it, I didn't mention it. Um, if you know about it, please leave a comment. Tell me what country you're from and or, you know, what, what you know about which country has a different crypto uh, status than what I've listed in this video. I would absolutely love to know that. Uh, always want to be the most up to date if I can. Um, but that's the list I have of all the research I've done to date. I will post the uh, articles where I got the information uh, as well. Um, so you can do your own research on top of it. And uh, yeah, I hope that uh, helps you understand a bit why I think Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies are going to increase in value over time because of mass adoption, which will come with time and with the development of applications. It will take time. Like if you think this is going to explode tomorrow and everybody will be using crypto tomorrow, that's just not the reality, right? It's, it's this, these things take many years. Um, yes, we're 10 or 11 years into it, but that is not a long time in the history of how things move in civilization. Even the internet took decades to gain popularity. And so if it takes 20 years, 30 years for Bitcoin to become a mass adopted thing, so be it. Um, it may, by the way, I don't think it will ever necessarily become the world currency reserve uh, or the world reserve currency. I really don't, I don't see that happening. It may, it's arguable that it may, but I don't foresee that happening. I certainly don't foresee a country like the United States giving up its power easily. Um, and they will certainly try to control as much of Bitcoin as they can because the dollar and the, pet, you know, the petrodollar, uh, the US petrodollar is the money that is essentially the world currency reserve. And they don't want that to change, right? No empire that has its fiat be the one leading fiat ever wants to lose that. So they will fight tooth and nail, I'm sure some people will, um, to try to keep that power. And when your power is backed by, you know, the United States Armed Forces, there's a pretty good chance uh, in the current context of the world that that power will remain in place for a while. Um, whether that's right or wrong, I don't know. I'm not here to tell you. Well, maybe I do know, but I'm still not going to tell you. Um, but it's just opinion and, and politics, and, and I'm not going to get into that in this video, right? But I did want to go over it for you at least to know where are some places that crypto is seen as a good thing, uh, where are some places that it's seen as a terrible thing, and, and where are maybe some of the best places where you, if you happen to be, or if you can go there, you might find uh, greater success than where you currently are, depending on where you currently are. Um, by going there and developing blockchain and crypto, right? Like I can tell you, uh, you know, in Israel, they are highly actively developing blockchain and crypto technology. It is one of the, by far, leading technology countries in the world for, well, many different technologies, but certainly crypto and blockchain. Um, and it's not by accident that it's gaining such popularity there. Uh, the government in Israel has basically... Uh, encouraged the development of cryptocurrency and, and blockchain technology 
and they are very much involved in the uh, development of startups and uh, other kind of companies that are working in this field. Uh, and they are partnering on a lot of projects with you know, blockchain and crypto. So many countries around the world that did not get a special mention by me um, in this short list are doing amazing things with crypto. Uh, but again, if you're from one of the countries, let me know what is the status of crypto actually, if it's different than what I said, or, or and what do you know about the development of blockchain and crypto there? I'd love to know from a marketing point of view, especially, um, or regulation. <laughs> that's interesting too. Um, and that's going to do it for now. So thanks again to listening and watching, whichever you've been doing, or both, to Crypto Marketing Insights. And until next time, folks, take care. Mm -hmm.